Nishi. Welcome to the Medical World Forum where we talk about basic medical sciences. So, let's get started. So first, let us talk about osteoarthritis. Before we go to rheumatoid arthritis, we'll go to osteoarthritis. So, what is exactly osteoarthritis? Osteoarthritis is mainly a mechanical problem. If you look at the pathogenesis, it is mainly a mechanical problem. Why do we say it's a mechanical problem? For instance, it can occur in all weight-bearing joints like hip joint, knee joint. Basically, it's due to the constant wear and tear produced by the articular surfaces. Normally, the articular surfaces are covered by a cartilage, but due to the erosion caused by this constant wear and tear, the cartilage wears off, causing this destruction. That is why this is called a destructive joint disease. So the predisposing factor, let's look at them later. Let us see now about the predisposing factors of osteoarthritis. So the first main predisposing factor is the age. So typically old people can present with osteoarthritis. It's very common to see old people rather than uh, young. And next, obesity. Once again, uh, obesity and also joint trauma, they are the main reasons of development of osteoarthritis because there is an overuse of the joint surfaces causing the destruction of the articular surfaces. This decreases the joint space between the two articular surfaces and that leads to a phenomenon of uh, polishing of the bone surfaces and this polishing will cause extreme pain and also crepitations. In uh, osteoarthritis we see minimal inflammation or sometimes no inflammation. This is basically a chronic wear and tear process where there is destruction of joints unlike in rheumatoid arthritis where the baseline problem is the inflammation itself. This is either a monoarticular disease or it could be an oligoarticular disease which uh, has an asymmetric distribution. Now this is how a normal joint would look like. The joint capsule, the articular surface cartilages which are intact and also the joint space which is containing the synovial fluid being symmetrical in both the sides. Now this shows a comparison between how a joint with the pathology looks compared with the joint without the pathology. So in osteoarthritis the most classical feature what we would find in a radiological examination is the appearances of osteophytes. They are like tiny burns, bone spurs which overgrows due to um, asymmetric stress. You almost always notice the subchondral cysts on the bone and most importantly take note of this the point that subchondral sclerosis is more common in osteoarthritis and in rheumatoid arthritis. I will uh, tell you when we are discussing rheumatoid arthritis. So here basically we see narrowing of the joint space but we don't see ankylosing. The meaning of ankylosing is the joining of the bones you see ankylosing in rheumatoid arthritis and also just at the back of your mind just keep in uh, your mind that this osteoarthritis is not an inflammatory process and there is almost no or minimal inflammatory processes and in these patients the pain occurs due to overuse it's due to overuse of the joint So how will these patients clinically present? You would see these patients are normally at their old age. They are either football players or they commonly have a history of uh, chronic uh, mechanical stress on the particular joint which they are complaining. So well they will complain on pain mostly in the weight bearing joints like the hip joints, knee joint and even the vertebrae. So you would uh, be hearing a history of uh, the progressive increase of 
pain for a couple of months also important involvement in the distal interphalangeal joint and the proximal interphalangeal joint we should remember that uh, there will be like a nodular formation and they have been given particular names which we are supposed to know Heberden nodes at the distal interphalangeal joint and the Bouchard nodes at the proximal interphalangeal joint and the most important thing what we have to remember here is there is no involvement of the metacarpophalangeal joint what would we expect to see on an x-ray of a patient with osteoarthritis we would see a joint space narrowing but we will not see an ankylosing because as i mentioned earlier ankylosis would be most commonly seen in rheumatoid arthritis and we will mostly see many osteophytes if in case a synovial fluid aspiration has been done the white blood cell count of the synovial fluid would be always less than 2000 per millimeter cube in a patient with osteoarthritis hence this is a non-inflammatory process What can we appreciate in a bone joint which is affected with osteoarthritis? There could be ulcerations, there could be thinning of the cartilage and there could be sclerotic zones of the bones affected with osteoarthritis. So there will be a picture in the next couple of seconds which is depicting the comparison between a normal bone and a bone affected with osteoarthritis. There will also be a diagram after this which will uh, depict the radiological image of uh, a patient with osteoarthritis, specifically the involvement of the DIP and the PIP. The next most important feature in osteoarthritis what we have to focus on unlike in rheumatoid arthritis there are no extra articular manifestations in rheumatoid in osteoarthritis i'm sorry there are no extra articular manifestations in osteoarthritis unlike rheumatoid arthritis now how about rheumatoid arthritis rheumatoid arthritis is an autoimmune inflammatory response this is actually a hypersensitivity type 3 response so what is hypersensitivity type 3 reaction it is actually an antigen antibody complex which binds or deposits on the synovial sheet and that stimulating or triggering an inflammatory response destructing the synovial sheet this is what is basically happening in rheumatoid arthritis and the cytokines released uh, calls all the uh, white blood cells to the location mainly there is an involvement of small joints and uh, compared to osteoarthritis in rheumatoid arthritis there is no much involvement of the weight bearing joints and also we would likely see a patient having a polyarticular involvement which is symmetrical The predisposing factors of rheumatoid arthritis are as follows. Female gender is highly predisposed with rheumatoid arthritis. And next, the HLADR4. It is actually a genetic allele serotype which is highly associated with rheumatoid diseases like rheumatoid arthritis, um, drug-induced uh, systemic lupus erythematosus. And also smoking, silica exposure also makes a certain predisposing factor. One of the most important factor of predisposition is positive rheumatoid factor. It is actually an anti-IgG antibody and in most of the people uh, they are positive. And also anticyclic citrullinated peptide antibody. It's called ACCPA. 
they are also very specific clinical presentation of rheumatoid arthritis the most important clinical presentation in rheumatoid arthritis is pain so to be more specific if we are comparing the pain in osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis in rheumatoid arthritis patients would complain on pain more specifically like morning stiffness which is the patient would complain that the joint is really stiff it's like a tube and it takes them like more than an hour or maybe an hour and a half so that they can move the joint easily this is actually due to an inflammatory process over the night which causes kind of a gelling between the articular surface so that's the main uh, factor of the morning stiffness in comparison with osteoarthritis where the pain worsens in, at the end of the day and the most common uh, clinical manifestation of rheumatoid arthritis is the extra articular manifestations not that they are very common it's like a main differential diagnosis between osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis is the presence of extra articular manifestations like rheumatoid nodules you normally see rheumatoid nodules in the places where there is more uh stress on the skin like the olecranon so it's actually a vasculitis reaction on that particular area resulting in a fibrinoid necrosis in that particular region resulting in the nodular formation there could be also a lung involvement with dust particles resulting in pneumoconiosis this is called kaplan syndrome and there can also be other interstitial lung diseases and there could be serositis like pleuritis pericarditis so and also most important is the anemia of chronic diseases and also if there is a triad of rheumatoid arthritis neutropenia and splenomegaly it is the syndrome called felty syndrome it's really clinically important Uh, for the boards and due to the chronic inflammatory processes there could be an amyloidosis due to the extra production of serum amyloid a which is an acute phase reactant and also the association with the uh, jogren syndrome where there's dry eyes and dry mouth and also carpal tunnel syndrome also could be observed so this here is once again a picture of how a normal joint would look like and within few moments i will be showing you a picture of uh, the famous deformity which you will see in rheumatoid arthritis now this here is a joint involved with rheumatoid arthritis so in a radiological examination you would see the inflammation of and swelling of soft tissue and the most striking thing what you have to notice is the development of pannus what is a pannus pannus is actually a collection of granulating tissue a granulating tissue is like macrophages and epithelioid cells and giant cells being collected at that particular period during chronic inflammatory processes so this pannus will destroy the articular surfaces and also the bones below it resulting in the erosions and also the main characteristic feature in uh, rheumatoid arthritis is the presence of um, ankylosis where you will not see it in osteoarthritis so whenever you see ankylosing uh, arthritis always think about rheumatoid arthritis if it is seropositive and also there will be erosions as i mentioned before now what are the investigations we would carry out if we see such clinical picture and what would we expect from the investigations we perform the main investigation which we would like to perform in a patient with uh, arthritic complaints are radiological examinations which is the conventional x ray we would appreciate erosions joint space narrowings which is uh, also complicated with ankylosings soft tissue swellings deformities and subluxations mainly we, we notice uh, those deformations in the uh, interphalangeal joints and then also we see the fingers containing ulnar deviation with swan neck deformity in the uh, distal interphalangeal joint so most important thing what we have to remember is rheumatoid arthritis does not involve with the distal interphalangeal joint and the first 
carpal metacarpal joint we should always keep that in mind and another thing which we should keep in mind that if at all a synovial fluid aspiration is done we would expect to see white blood cells more than 2000 per millimeter cube so it proves that the synovial fluid is inflammatory and as i said before the involvement of rheumatoid arthritis is limited to proximal interphalangeal joint and um, uh, middle um, metacarpophalangeal joint i'm sorry the proximal interphalangeal joint and metacarpophalangeal joint and not dip and first carpometacarpal joint this shows here the famous boutonniere's deformity here there is a hyperflexion of the proximal interphalangeal joint and there is a hyperextension of the distal interphalangeal joint this is very classical in rheumatoid arthritis and that's all for the basic principles about the comparison between osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis.